Okay, yeah, look, when it comes to Intel CPUs, it can be just a little difficult to find true value. In light of Ryzen, right, blue team options can look just a bit expensive and, and premium. Consider this, you can buy a first gen Ryzen 5 1600 of a six core CPU with 12 threads for under 140 bucks. If you went the Intel route for that same budget, you'd only be able to afford a Core i3, something like the 8350K which is only a four core CPU. But that's all changed with the launch of this chip right here. This is Intel's Core i5-9400F, and it just might be the best value gaming CPU on the market. And no, this is not a late April Fool's joke. So let's run through some of the specifications. The Core i5-9400F is a six core, six thread Coffee Lake CPU. Intel's ninth gen stuff is very similar to eighth gen and that core counts for the lower chips stay essentially the same. i3s are hyper-threaded four cores, i5s are six cores, and i7s are either hyper-threaded or non-hyper-threaded eight cores with out-of-box frequencies reaching five gigahertz. But what then makes this particular Core i5 special? And the answer is it's price. This CPU as of April 2nd, when I wrote this, this script for this video, can be purchased for 160 bucks. And with it, you also get a free Cooler Master Devastator 3, if that matters to you. It's a little gaming mouse you can get if you buy it on Newegg. A nice added perk, just something extra. Now the 9400F is a 65 watt hexacore processor with a 4.1 gigahertz turbo boost and Intel Optane support. But then what the heck does the, the F stand for? We've never seen an F before. I can't remember ever seeing an F before. I think this is a new thing. Well, yeah, uh, that's kind of the catch. You see, the reason why these chips are occasionally cheaper than their non-F counterparts is because these here lack integrated graphics. This means you'll need a discrete graphics card in your system in order to have a picture displayed on screen. This is the case even if the motherboard in question supports display out, so don't be fooled by that. Now, is this a big deal? I mean, <laughs> not really. Most of us are sporting discrete graphics and they're usually a lot better than IGP, so that's kind of the incentive there. Almost all Ryzen CPUs, by the way, also lack IGPs, so if that's your reason for avoiding the 9400F, you should probably stick to a Ryzen APU or non-F Intel SKU. When Intel first announced these things earlier this year, they admittedly didn't look too hot. They were kind of, basically they were trying to sell these uh, for the same price as their non-F counterparts, what we'd expect the non-F chips to, to be priced at. So a Core i5, this would be equivalent to like an 8400, wouldn't pay a dime over 200 bucks for it. Probably around 100, 170 to 180 USD. In the, in the States, that's what I'd expect to pay. But they were trying to sell the F SKU for the same price as what we'd expect the non-F SKU to go for. And I, I wasn't a big fan of that. But they came down in price recently. Again, 160 bucks for this. I think a $20 discount is decent for somebody that's already got a discrete graphics card already, which is, again, probably most of us. And then on top of that, you're gonna get some really great gaming performance out of this thing, as we'll show you in a few minutes. Minutes. And look, the whole pricing issue with the FSQs in the beginning was probably a response to Intel's own issues with supply in its current 14 nanometer process. Now that chipsets and CPUs are both being manufactured in the same node, the supply chain is bottlenecked. That's a big reason why prices for Intel CPUs in general aren't as hot competitive as Ryzen's. But every now and then, a gem like this one pops up and for a decent price, like 160 bucks for a core i5 that, I mean, a six core i5, it's pretty darn good. In all honesty, for the 9400F, I'd say it's probably the best value gaming CPU on the market. Just gaming, don't take my words out of context. If you are just buying a CPU to game with, you wanna buy the Core i5-9400F at 160 bucks. Just take my word for it. Actually, you know what, don't take my word for it, I'll show you. So here is what I did. I put together an Intel platform using 16 gigs of DDR4, a GTX 1660 Ti, a graphics code I feel like you'd wanna pair with this CPU, and a B360 motherboard. Remember, this is a non-K SKU, so we really don't need an overclocking motherboard like a Z series chipset. Now for the sake of comparison, I put together a similarly priced Ryzen platform using a B450 motherboard, the same 16 gigs of RAM, and a Ryzen 5 2600. The AMD CPU has an advantage with multi-threading, but Intel's clock-for-clock -clock edge and compute tasks, and to an extent software optimization, keep it in the ring, again, as you'll see shortly. One thing to note, I am manually overclocking the 2600 to four gigahertz across all cores. I don't care, Intel fanboys, I'm doing it because I can, that's the point. Right, you can with these Ryzen chips, you can't with some Intel SKUs. That's not our fault, that's Intel's fault. They have to suffer the consequences. So I'm gonna give 
every advantage I can to the AMD uh, CPU, including uh, the overclock and also memory, uh, memory frequency, because we were able to overclock our DDR4 with the uh, B450 I'm using here. This is the Tough B450 Gaming Plus from uh, Asus that I'm using here, and that allowed me to overclock memory to 3000 megahertz. 3200 was unstable, I was getting blue screens quite randomly uh, and frequently, and so I dropped things down to 3000 megahertz, and it was smooth as butter. Now, with the B360 motherboard, 2666 was as high as I could go. That goes without saying, we could attain a higher clock with a Z or H series chipset if we wanted, but we'd be cutting into our budget and it would really make no sense, again, to pair either of those with a cheap CPU, relatively speaking. Additionally, Intel chips aren't hindered by a reduction in RAM frequency anywhere near to the extent to which Ryzen chips are, so it isn't like we're hurting the 9400F very much. And all I had to do in order to get this B360 board to work with a 9400F was flash an updated BIOS with an older Coffee Lake SKU. Also, a quick reference to the graphics card, I chose the 1660 Ti again because I felt it was a balanced card for these CPUs. I don't expect anyone to, I'm not saying that no one does, but I just wouldn't recommend you pair a 2080 Ti with something like a Core i5-9400F. Just, to me, it doesn't make any sense. Same goes for the Ryzen 5 2600, although I think in that case it's a little more justified. It just the tests wouldn't be indicative of like real world performance. And so I ensured that the platforms that I was using uh, were as balanced as possible, especially given the fact that we're testing the 1080p resolution as well. And I think the 1660 Ti is perfect for that. So here are some numbers. In Cinebench R20, not R15, but R20, the i5-9400F scored 2318CB. It's not bad for six lot cores. The Ryzen 5 2600 though, takes the cake with a strong 2736. It's what we should expect from this fab with simultaneous multi-threading tucked in, and it isn't up for debate. I mean, if we ran similar synthetic benchmarks, we'd find that the 2600 is by far the better multitasker. But what if we throw a synthetic test that leverages both discrete GPU and CPU horsepower? Most games aren't gonna utilize every core that you throw at it. Time Spy will though, so this is again a bit of an edge for the 2600. So in 3 Mark Time Spy's DX12 benchmark, the 9400F loses by a mere 91 points, 6070 versus 6161. The reason for the blue team loss? Fewer threads, basically that's what it comes down to. Again, in applications that properly leverage more than say four or six cores, the Ryzen platform reigns supreme in the value department. I know it sounds cliche at this point, but it's important that we stress the differences and reveal all strengths and weaknesses of both platforms so you can make the most informed purchase decision that is, after all, why this video exists. Let's move on to a few games now. First up, as always, is GTA 5. This one has eh, just a bit of an Intel bias, and it shows across the board. 139 FPS on average for the blue team and 118 for the red team. Both gaming experiences were satisfactory, mind you. I mean, you probably couldn't distinguish the two unless you knew that one was ahead of the other beforehand. But when it comes to the fine details, the Intel platform boasts a bit more wiggle room for the tweaking of in-game settings. So you could possibly make your game look a bit better at the expense of losing a few frames, and you'd still get the performance that you'd get if you just chose an AMD CPU to begin with. Our lowest 1% and 0.1% of frames, by the way, reveal similar stories. Next up, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This one should close the gap a bit more or less due to the fact that the game is a resource hog to say the least. 68 FPS on average for the 2600, 76 for the 9400F. One thing to note here, the uh, AMD CPU surprisingly falls short in the lowest 0.1% frame, suggesting a fair degree of stutter throughout playback. It's something you would notice uh, if you were just playing this game, I don't know, in, in the real world, that's kind of the point of all of this. Now the next game I tested was Resident Evil 2, which was actually bundled with some AMD graphics cards, so we should expect maybe an AMD Edge here. I know it's a CPU versus a GPU, but still. In fact, if you'd looked at this metric alone, you'd think performance between the two was identical. It's 136 FPS versus 136. I kid you not, in multiple runs of this, the exact same scores. However, our lowest 1% of frames reveals an 8 FPS gap. That's over a 10% reduction from Intel to AMD. And the story worsens for the lowest 0.1% of frames, where the gap widens to above 20%. And before you jump on me for inconsistent testing, the exact same routines were followed the exact same pass, I reinstalled Windows in every single program in the same day in order to get totally untouched, you know, perfectly clean benchmarks 
of each platform, okay? I use the exact same uh, hard drive, right? So that was where I stored all my Steam games, but I completely wiped the M.2 drive that I used for the boot drive uh, between these tests because you don't want to take an Intel SSD and then slap that into an AMD system and then have the Windows drivers kind of update themselves. You never really get a, a true experience one-to-one. -one. There's always going to be some conflict on the uh, software level that prevents the, the new system from really performing at its best. So it's important that you wipe the OS completely to have that clean slate. And the next game I tested was F1 2017, which I do more or less for the sake of consistency. This benchmark is pretty much indicative of what you should expect in-game. This uh, actually favors single core performance, which Intel still dominates at a lackluster sub 4 gigahertz all core turbo boost, 144 FPS on average for the Core i5, 135 for the R5 2600. Am I surprised? No, not really, though I am a bit stunned by the blue team's ability to keep 1% and 0.1% lows well above its competitors. 77 FPS versus 62 for the lowest 0.1% of frames is a huge delta in my opinion and amounts to a clear and distinguishable disadvantage for the 2600 and the gamer using that CPU in this game. But with all that said, I, I want to stress that a lot of this comes down to what you do on your machine and that's why I'm not going to throw out a huge blanket statement like I did in this video right here, although I was right. Look, the truth is the 9400F is good. It's it's really good, especially for 160 USD. That's my opinion. No one's paying me to say that. I literally just asked Intel to send this because I wanted to test it. I thought it would be a good competitor in the gaming space, and it is. I mean, I, I, I was kind of right about that, but I could have been wrong. And if I was wrong and the Ryzen 5 6, 2600 or even the 1600 was better than this in games, then my conclusion would be the opposite. I'd say, uh, it doesn't look like the, uh, the Core i5s are keeping up anymore in 2019 with most games. Granted, I didn't test a whole, you know, library of Steam games. I know that there are some variants and depending on the games you play, some might favor the AMD CPU more. I understand that. I'm just saying of the four or five games that I just happened to test in my own Steam library, every single one of them gave the victory to the Core i5. I mean, is that really a surprise though? Like we all kind of knew that Intel CPUs were better for gaming, but that's just it. Who just games anymore? You usually you stream or you do something else with it. So I really only recommend the CPU for those who game. Would I pay more than 160 bucks for it? Not really. Why would you pay the same price for a CPU without an IGP that you could for one with an IGP? And that's really the only Achilles heel in this situation. You have no IGP. Will it affect gamers? Nope, not most of them. As long as you have a discrete graphics card, you won't even notice. You could say the same for the Ryzen CPU, right? The 2600 doesn't have an IGP either. But a big advantage of Intel in the content creation department normally is the fact that its IGP allows for quick sync and quick sync software encoding, which basically accelerates render tasks and things of the sort. Uh, it actually is a really big help from a content creation standpoint, especially in Premiere Pro. And that's why I kept coming back to Intel for my personal machine. I would switch to Ryzen and come back because render times are significantly faster when both the IGP and discrete graphics are allowed to work together. But apart from that, the only other downside is streaming. It's a unique topic, perhaps a bit niche, though in 2019, a lot of people are streaming. And uh, so if that's a goal of yours in 2019, my recommendation is not the CPU, it's the Ryzen 5 2600, which is actually sitting in that box right, right there. It just makes more sense for someone that legitimately multitasks. However, one could argue that using the NVIDIA encoder with something like a RTX 2060 or 2070 would offset any CPU bound scenario, giving chips like the 9400F the breathing room they need to dominate the gaming space as they've done for several years. So it really depends on your settings in Steam, uh, excuse me, not Steam, but in OBS or whatever streaming platform you use. So if you're an all around gamer then and that's all you focus on I want to stress if that's all you do if you just play video games I recommend this CPU honestly I know that a thousand dollar budget's a bit high but if you could fit this into your budget and you're not going overkill I think this is a great buy if you pair this with even a 2080 a 2080 Ti this is gonna pull its weight in most cases because of most games are still barely if at all utilizing six cores I know that sounds weird but it's true. I mean, we have the huge core push from AMD and that's kind of pushing Intel to do the same, but just because your system has eight cores and 16 threads, that doesn't mean you're using uh, the, the full potential of your CPU. In fact, I would argue most people are not, even if they're on Ryzen 7 CPUs or heck for that matter, Threadripper or Core i9s like the 7980XE, the 7900, the 9980XE. Most people aren't utilizing all of those threads. If they are, good for them. They bought the right CPU. If you're doing some programming, some coding that requires the use of 32 threads, 64 threads, whatever, 
that's great, but I would say most people aren't. And the sweet spot, in my opinion, is between six and 12 threads. I think the 2600 is a really great value as well, but it depends on what you're doing, obviously. So with that, I will say, I'm not sure how much longer the sale at 160 bucks will last for the 9400, F, that's not me trying to push you to buy it, but if you do want to buy it, I encourage you to use our affiliate link down below. I appreciate that if you do. We get a small kickback, it's like two, three percent, but it goes a long way if a few people do it. Uh, in the end, it really all just comes down to what you see yourself doing with your machine. Both platforms are great. I'm not trying to knock on AMD. You guys don't need to you know, annihilate me in the comment section. I'm just saying, if you are strictly gaming, then the 9400F is a very solid contender. I didn't see myself saying that in 2019, but Intel actually priced this thing semi-competitively at 160 bucks. They are definitely targeting the Ryzen 5 lineup at that price. And again, if all you're doing is gaming, it's worth a shot. I mean, if you're an AMD fanboy, I'm not gonna be able to convince you either way. If you're an Intel fanboy, I'm not gonna be able to convince you either way either. You're gonna buy this, or you're gonna buy something even better than this from the blue team. It's just important that you guys keep an open mind. It really is. You know, when I first got into this, I always saw Intel as the superior platform. I honestly did. Because at the time, they had the best CPUs. We were stuck with bulldozer and pile drive architectures, uh, you know, Vishira for six, seven years with AMD. And Intel was coming out with incremental updates. I'll give them that. I mean, especially recently, they've just been stretching that 14 nanometer node for as long as they can. Uh, but you know, when Haswell came out and then Skylake, it was actually a very compelling platform. And if you had the money, you bought Intel because you could because you knew it was better. But today, there are so many different use case scenarios for AMD and Intel CPUs. Competition is beautiful, I love it. I just love giving both sides an opportunity to speak their mind. And that's why I tested this CPU. That's why I asked Intel to send this because I thought it had a really good chance at outshining the Ryzen 5 platform, uh, the Ryzen 5 CPUs rather, in games. In the games that I tested, that was the case. I'm not speaking for all games, but the ones I happen to test it definitely um, held its own and uh, outperformed the 2600, which is priced almost equally to the 9400F. I'll stop talking now. You guys have been awesome. Thanks for watching this far into the video. If you like this one, thumbs up. You know what to do. Thumbs down for the opposite. Or if you hate everything about life, you can click that red subscribe button if you haven't already. Become a member for feeling fancy. And we'll catch you in the next one. This is Science Studio. Thanks for watching. And thanks for learning with us.